We want to begin with the deadly flooding in Texas, though. Major search and rescue efforts are underway along the Guadalupe River as dozens remain missing after Friday's catastrophic flooding. Now, sadly, the death toll continues to grow with at least 50 deaths now being reported. This does include 14 children. The Guadalupe River rose 30 feet in just a matter of hours, engulfing homes, camps and roads. So for a closer look at what happened, we're joined now by AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist John Porter. And John, first, I want to talk about the warnings that were issued and when they were issued. Well, good morning. Uh, this, uh, first of all, I just want to say this is a heartbreaking tragedy and our thoughts are with all of the people and families that have been affected by this uh, tremendous tragedy. And right now the focus is obviously on saving as many lives as possible and for people in the hardest hit areas to be aware of the risk for additional flooding. There'll be more heavy rain there today. But backing up to this, uh, to what led up to this event, there were flash flood warnings issued for these areas uh, with ample notice so that uh, life safety measures could be undertaken. Uh, AccuWeather issued uh, the first uh, flash flood warnings in that area around uh, 1244 Central Time. Uh, the National Weather Service then issued a uh, flash flood warning in that area uh, at uh, 114 Central Time. And of course, the peak of the flooding looks like it occurred between 4 and 430 Central Time, uh, for example, in the Hunt area near some of those camps. So there had been several hours of advance notice. The warnings were there in order for people to know that there was an imminent risk to safety in those areas. Whenever flash flood warnings are issued, regardless of the amount of rainfall that has fallen or what's forecast, that's the time to take action. And John, like you mentioned, of course, right now the focus is saving lives, those search and rescue operations. But in the days to weeks to come, I think a lot of people are going to have questions for officials, for uh, those who own and run the camp. With your expert insight, I mean, what do you think some of those questions will and should be? Well, that's a great point. A full investigation is going to be required, but there are a couple of things that are very uh, concerning that need to be looked into, which is given those warnings that were in place, as I mentioned, hours before the most serious uh, flash flooding occurred in those areas, what was the action plan that each of the camps or RV uh, lo or parks or other locations where, where large numbers of people assembled there along the Guadalupe River and in other areas there in Kerr County, what were the action plans that those facilities had in terms of their weather risk mitigation plan for receiving the best flash flood warnings and then activating plans to bring people to safe shelter. And of course, there has to be somebody who's in charge of constantly monitoring for severe weather 24 by 7, just like they would physical security, multiple ways of getting warnings here at AccuWeather. Of course, we work with half the Fortune 500s and thousands of other businesses to help keep people safer and best protected. And it's very important to have, have uh, multiple redundancies in order to be able to get those warnings. We send our warnings to our customers in a variety of different ways, SMS, text, uh, specialized mobile application. And we even have with many of our customers backups so that we'll call customers in case we don't have a confirmation that they've received a warning. So there are many questions that need to be asked in terms of what was the action plans that were in place in terms of dealing with flash flooding and then what steps were taken when those warnings with ample time were received in order to mitigate the risk for injuries and fatalities. And those are the questions that are going to need to be asked in the coming weeks. Now, let's give this a little bit more context. I want to show our viewers a map of where we saw the heaviest rainfall. It's the area in red there. And John, this was several inches of rain falling very quickly. It was, and this is also important to point out, it kind of goes back to my earlier comments about the context of flooding in this part of the uh, state of Texas. This is uh, perhaps the most flash flood vulnerable part of the country because of the fact that you have co uh, complex terrain, lots of hills and valleys that that water can pour into, and oftentimes uh, access to Gulf moisture or moisture from the Eastern Pacific. Slow moving storms, that's what happened in this particular case. And the Guadalupe River, went from probably just a typical lazy river, a little bit of slow motion, to a wall of water with height rises of 30 feet of fast moving water in less than an hour. And there's nothing worse than fast moving water. It will destroy everything in its path. And that's what led to, uh, to this, uh, this tragic outcome in terms of just water that uh, came way too fast down that river, uh, which has happened many times before across the hill country of, of, uh, of, uh, of South Central Texas, including the Wimberley 
area flash flood that happened back in 2015 where there was another wall of water. Again, another situation where water rose 30 feet in the matter of an hour. And along the Guadalupe River in 1987, another catastrophic flash flood. So this area of Texas is known for these types of dangerous flash floods, which is ev ev even more reason that all flash flood warnings need to be taken seriously. And you have to assume that a very serious situation, a life-threatening situation is going to evolve. That's why immediate flash flood warnings are, are issued to indicate that immediate risk to life and property. Yeah, I mean, there were flash flood emergencies issued as well, an even higher level of alert. But I'm sure a lot of people are sitting here thinking, how did this happen? And we do have a graphic that kind of shows the weather pattern that really is a, a big reason why we had this situation. Well, it's the classic setup across this part of the country with a slow, slow moving thunderstorms that produce two to four inches of rainfall per hour. They were parked over the same areas, access to near record levels of atmospheric moisture flowing in from the south. That's a recipe for trouble. And that's a recipe for very serious flash flooding. And that's what's occurred here. And of course, I want to give another reminder that you said it, take all flash flood warnings seriously and just assume that it is a life-threatening situation. Yeah, that's extremely important. That's why the warnings are issued in order to be able to provide that notification and that advance notice that that's the time to act, to seek higher ground. And especially if you're in an area along a river or a, street, street, a, a creek or a stream, those are the types of situations where uh, water can quick, rapidly rise and a life-threatening emergency can quickly happen. It was very scary and concerning to hear some campers from camps along in, in that area indicating that they were awoken not by somebody telling them that there was a warning and they needed to evacuate, but rather they were awoken by water rising up to the second level of cabins. We need to, the, the question is, why did that happen? with advanced warnings, advanced flash flood warnings indicating that immediate risk to life and safety. And that's the question that's going to have to be answered here in the coming weeks. AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist John Porter, thanks so much for joining us.